Okay. I would like to review, before we jump into line integrals, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Anyone? Fundamental theorem of calculus? I don't think you did. You all know it. You just don't know exactly what it says. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Uh, I'm going to write it differently, but yes, it's exactly what you just said. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now I want to do the fundamental theorem for line integrals. Okay, here's what the theorem says. Let C be a smooth curve. Given by R of T. Where t is between a and b, let little f be a differentiable function whose gradient is continuous on c. And the following will be true. If we have the line integral over the curve C of the gradient of F dot dr, one way to calculate that is to take that function F of R of B, subtract F of R of A. Do you all remember from last section talking about if you have a vector field f and there, there's some little function f or some function little f where the gradient of little f is equal to that big f? Do you remember seeing that? And then we called this little f a potential function? Okay, so that vocab is going to be very important this section. We will be confirming potential functions like we're going to do in the, in the next example, and then we will be finding them. So here's our first example. Confirm that little f of xy equals to x squared y minus 1 half y squared is a potential function. Bless you. For big F of xy is equal to 2xyi plus x squared minus yj. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Then we are going to evaluate the line integral of f dot dr for the curve C that's as follows. thing we need to confirm the potential function so again here's what it means to be a potential function if I take the gradient of that little function f that should get me the vector field big F gradient means take the derivative with respect to X and then Y if I take the derivative with respect to X here I get 2xy And if I take the derivative with respect to y, I get x squared minus y. Ooh. 
and then F we already have. Okay, so that shows us that yes, little f is a potential function for big F. So that was the first step. So then what we need to do, we need to calculate the line integral of f dot dr. How would you have done that yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you guys remember having to parameterize the curve? And that would have been your r of t, and you would have done f of r of t and then found the derivative? OK, so you can still do that. What's a little bit easier, though, is instead take the potential function, evaluate it at the end point, and then subtract when you evaluate at the beginning point. OK, if we plug 1, 2 into here, we get 2 minus 2, 0. If we plug in negative 1, 4, I'll tell you you get negative 4. So our final answer then ends up being positive 4. What does that number mean? What is f dot dr? That has a very specific meaning. Work. Yeah, that's the amount of work that's done in moving a particle from negative 1, 4 to 1, 2. OK, remember, though, it has to be a smooth curve. So a few things have to be the case. One, c has to be a smooth curve, which we're going to be looking at. And two, you have to be able to find a potential function. So most of the time, I'm not going to give you one, so we'll talk eventually about how to find the potential function. But as long as you can find a potential function, this, in my opinion, is a lot easier than parameterizing the curve. Questions on that before we move on? We're going to return to it, but we're going to move on for right now. Okay, next thing we need to talk about is independence of path. So one thing I want us to recall is when we took the line integral of f dot dr over some curve c1, Hopefully we recall that was not the same as f dot dr over a different curve with the same endpoints, though. So what I'm saying here is that the value of the line integral depends on the path. We said when it was an arc length parameterization, when it was ds, the path didn't matter. But as soon as we talked about dr, even if you have the same beginning point and same end point, line integral is going to be different depending on the path that you take. Does that sound familiar? OK. But here's what the fundamental theorem of line integrals then implies. This time, if I do the gradient of f dot dr, that will be equal to the gradient of f dot dr over a different curve, as long as C1 and C2 have the same endpoints. And that's from the theorem. All we did was we took the potential function, plugged in the two endpoints, and subtracted. So as long as we have the same endpoints and we're looking at the gradient of f in our line integral, we're going to have the same value. This is true for any line integral of a conservative vector field. So it's not any line integral. It has to be a conservative vector field. Again, here's what I mean by conservative. We see, say that big F is conservative as long as we can find a function little f such that the gradient of little f will give us the vector field. 
that little f we called the potential function. Okay, here's where that leads us to. In general, line integral along the curve C of f dot dr, we say is independent of path if line integral over curve one of f dot dr is equal to line integral over the curve two of f dot dr for any two paths C1 and C2 that ha have the same initial and end points. That's going to be very helpful. So if we have a line integral that's independent of path, the path that we take doesn't matter. So we can choose the path that's most convenient to us. This has special implications when you have closed paths. So geometrically, here's what I mean by a closed closed path, same starting and ending point. Okay. The following are all equivalent. First, if we say that the vector field f of x, y, which is equal to some function in terms of x, y, and then another function in terms of x, y, is conservative. So again, remember that means there exists some function little f, where the gradient of that function will give us the vector field. So if we say that our vector field is conservative, okay, if it's conservative, it's independent of path, which means the path doesn't matter, as long as it has the same starting and ending point. So in this case, I can choose any path that starts and ends at this point, which means the work done is just zero because right, I can just choose no path. I didn't even have to move. So those two are equivalent. They also imply that the line integral of f dot dr is independent of path. From any point p to any point Q. Okay. As long as you have a closed path, any one of these implies the other two. These two, in my opinion, are the most important. If you know a vector field is conservative, you know that it is independent of path. I promise eventually this is going to get to a point where it means something to us. So right now we're just writing it down, but it will mean something. We have some more vocab, a theorem, and then examples. We got that in us? Okay, great. Here's some more vocab that we don't necessarily need now, but you are going to need eventually. Okay, something like this is called a simple path. A 
Something that's not simple would look like this. So a path that crosses over itself is not simple. we have something like this. This is called simply connected. What I mean by simply connected is that it's closed and non-intersecting. And lastly, you might have something like this, where there's some holes in the region. This one is called multiply connected. Which means that there's some holes in the domain. So here's where that leads us. That fundamental theorem of line integrals is a more helpful way or easier way, in my opinion, to calculate the value of a line integral. We need to know when we can use the theorem, though. It doesn't work for every line integral. So what that tells us is that that fundamental theorem of line integrals only applies when f is conservative. So f is conservative if it's independent of path, if we can find the potential function. If f is conservative, then the line integral of f dot dr will be the potential function evaluated at the end point. Subtract the potential function evaluated at the beginning point. So I told us at the beginning, we are going to have to be able to find the potential functions, though. I'm not going to give you the potential function most of the time. So it would be helpful for us to know if f is conservative so that we can use this theorem. If f is conservative, then we'll have to find the potential function, and then we can use the theorem rather than parameterizing the curve. So there is something called the conservative field test. Conservative field test will help us determine if big F is a conservative vector field, so if there is a potential function that we can find. Let big F be equal to some function P of XY times I plus some function Q of XY times J. And let that F be a vector field on an open simply connected region D. Here's how you know if it's a conservative vector field. <coughs> if you take the partial of P with respect to Y, take the partial of Q with respect to X, and they are equal throughout D, then we say that big F is conservative. In which case, we can use the fundamental theorem for line integrals. OK, so we're going to use this real quick. We are going to show that big F, which is equal to 2xy cubed, comma, 1 plus 3x squared y squared, is conservative. OK, before we use the conservative field test, I want to know how we would have done this before. Any ideas? 
So like 10 minutes ago, how would you have shown that this is a conservative vector field? Conservative vector field meaning it has a potential function. Nothing. Johnny, what do you think? Yeah, you would have had to find the vector field, or the potential function, rather. We would have had to find it. Now we don't have to. We'll talk. We will find it in a minute. But that's how we would have done it before. This is function p. That is function q. Based on the conservative field test, we are going to take the derivative of p with respect to y. In which case we get 6xy squared. We need to take the derivative of q with respect to x, in which case we get 6xy squared. So we say that big F is conservative then. Okay, now that we know that it's conservative, we are actually going to find the potential function. Which is what we call little f. Okay, there's going to be two ways. I'm going to show you one fully, and then the other one is related to the first way. So like Johnny said, we're going to have to integrate with respect to the correct variable. We have to remember that if we take the gradient of little f, we're going to get big F. So this then is the derivative of little f with respect to x. This is the derivative of little f with respect to y. Pick one of those to start with. I'm going to start with the first one. So we know that the partial of f with respect to x is equal to that 2xy cubed. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate with respect to x. If we integrate with respect to x here, we get x squared y cubed. Now you remember every time that you integrate, you have to have a constant. In this case, our constant could be in terms of y. So it might be a number, might be in terms of y. So we have to figure out if there's another term. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the derivative with respect to y. When we do, we get 3x squared y squared plus k prime of y. This is equal to that 1 plus 3x squared y squared from big F above. Which tells us that k prime of y is equal to 1. So we will integrate with respect to y. Our k of y then is y plus some constant. We've already taken care of x. So this constant k is going to be a number. So our potential function then, x squared y cubed plus k of y, which was right here. few things to chat about. First one, how can I verify that this is in fact the correct potential function? Find the gradient. Yeah, take the gradient and you should end up getting f. So take the derivative with respect to x, you get 2xy cubed. Take the derivative with respect to y, you get 1 plus 3x squared y squared, which is right there. So that's good. Another thing to tell you, uh, I have a difference when it comes to WebAssign with how I want your answers written. On a test in your packet, that's how I want your answer written. WebAssign, they always take k to be 0. To WebAssign, they won't put k there. 
So just know that if you're doing your home when you're doing your homework tonight, you're getting answers wrong. Don't put K in. That's why. Okay, that was the first way to find the potential function. Second way way to find the potential function is just use the other part. So start with partial f partial y. So we started with partial f partial x. You could start with par partial f partial y. You're going to get the same answer either way. Okay. Any questions before we do another example? Okay. We have a few more examples to do. Example three, we are going to find the work done. by the vector field big F of xy is equal to y cubed plus 1i plus 3xy squared plus 1j and moving the particle from 0, 0 to 2, 0 as shown. Okay. Calculating work. It's the line integral over the curve C of f dot dr. We have two options for how to calculate this work. How would you have calculated this work uh, before walking in today? How would you have found the work? I asked you this question at the beginning of class. Yeah, you would have parameterized the curve. You remember that? And then done f of r and r prime of t and dotted them. Okay, so you can still do that. I strongly prefer not to, so I'm not going to do it that way. So what we can ask ourselves first is, is f conservative? Because if it is, we can use the potential function then. So we're going to use the conservative field te test. Take the partial of p with respect to y. Take the partial of Q with respect to X and see if they're equal. Partial with respect to Y will be 3Y squared. Partial with respect to X will be 3Y squared. So yes, we can say that F is conservative. What that tells us then is the line integral of F dot dr is going to be the potential function evaluated at the end point, subtract the potential function evaluated at the beginning point. Are you all confident that you can find the potential function? OK, here's my real question. Do you want to try finding the potential function, or are we too shaky and we want to do it together? You guys want to try? OK, take like two minutes, see if you can find the potential function.
Whenever you are ready to check in with the person next to you, please do that. When you are ready, here's what I got for my potential function. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you're right. Mm. Did anyone get the answer I got? I would love to. Can I just show you my work? Okay. For those of you who want to see my work, here's what I did. I chose to start with partial f, partial y. I don't know why. That's what I did. Take the integrate with respect to y. Then you have k of x. Take the derivative set it equal to partial f, partial x from the vector field. Did you guys start with x? Yeah. Everyone started with x? Do you want to see how to do it starting with x? Man. I should have known you were going to do that, and that's what I should have started with. OK, so we have partial f. Partial x is equal to y cubed plus 1. <coughs> We are going to integrate with respect to x, in which case you get f is equal to xy cubed add x add k of y. Am I good so far? If I make a mistake, you're going to tell me, right? Yeah. Not let me do the whole problem. OK. Partial f, partial y, then, will be equal to 3xy squared plus k prime of y. Just taking the derivative here with respect to y. That is equal to 3xy squared plus 1 from the vector field. So then we get k prime of y equals 1. Integrate with respect to 1, or with respect to y, rather. We get k of y is equal to y, then. So I think a mistake that I make often is I don't go back to my original f. So sometimes I forget to go all the way back up there to plug in k of y. There's a k there. So we end up with x, y cubed plus x plus y plus k. Did you guys find what happened? Yes. Yeah, Not going back to the right. Yes. OK. We, asked, we were asked, though, to calculate work. Anytime you were asked to calculate work, I want to see this integral. You have to show me that. Because big F is conservative and we now found our potential function, we can do F of end point, subtract F of beginning point. If you trust me, it's 2 minus 0, and the work ends up being 2. Again, you can only use this method, though, because we proved that big F is a conservative vector field. When you got here, did you guys verify that this, this was the correct potential function? What do I mean by that? Yeah. Please verify. In math, it's not always possible to check your answers, so when it is, you should. OK. We have two more things to talk about. One has to do with this. Here's a quick trick for you. If f is conservative, so we showed that at the beginning before we found the potential function, then it's independent of path. The line integral is. 
let's say that you can't remember how to find the potential function. Either you can't or you keep finding the wrong one. If our line integral is independent of path, that means we can choose any path from the beginning point to the end point. So if you can't remember how to find the potential function, choose any convenient path. So this goes with the last example. So you can choose any path from 0, 0 to 2, 0, as long as your integral is independent of path. So we know that f is conservative. That tells us independent of path. That tells us we can choose any path from 0, 0 to 2, 0. So rather than choosing that semicircle, what is going to be an easier path to choose? Yeah, just a line integral. So what you can do is choose that line integral and parameterize that line integral which would be 2t comma 0 with t between 0 and 1. So the work then will be integrating from 0 to 1. It will be f of r of t, which really conveniently ends up being the vector 1, 1. You dot that with r prime of t. And then dt. So it ends up being the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 dt, which still gives us an answer of 2. OK. If I ask you specifically to find a potential function or to use the potential function, you're not going to get full credit for this. You will get some credit, sure. So it's better to do this than to leave the question blank. If we are calculating work, what is the way that will always work to calculate work when doing the uh, line integral? Parameterizing the curve. So well, the way that's always going to work is parameterizing the curve. If your vector field is independent of path or conservative, what two options do you have then? Find the potential function or any path. With me? Is it okay that I didn't write those down? Okay. We have one more example to do, finding a potential function. And that's when you have uh, three variables, not just two. Same general process, but I want to make sure we go through one together. Big F is going to be y squared, comma, 2xy add e to the 3z, comma, 3y e to the 3z. I want us to find little f, the potential function. Okay, same process as before. So let's take. Well, we know partial f with respect to x is going to be equal to y squared. So I just took that one. So then we are going to integrate with respect to x. We get xy squared plus k. This time k is in terms of y and z. So now if I take the partial of f with respect to y, so I'm going to take the derivative with respect to y, I get 2xy plus partial of k with respect to y. That'll be equal to 2xy plus e to the 3z from above. So the derivative with respect to y of k is equal to e to the 3z. So we are going to integrate with respect to y then. 
So our k of yz is equal to ye to the 3z plus k now is just in terms of z. We've already taken care of x and y. So I want us to regroup and write what we know so far about f. All the way back here, f was xy squared plus k of yz, so plus ye to the 3z plus k of z. So lastly, take the derivative of f with respect to z. We get 3ye to the 3z plus k prime of z. From above, that's going to be equal to 3ye to the 3z. k prime of z then is 0. If I integrate, k of z then is just some constant k. So our potential function, going back to there, and with that now, is xy squared plus ye to the 3z plus k. Please verify. So make sure you find the potential function of this. You take the derivative with respect to x, y, and z. Will there ever be a function where we don't just get a plain standard definition? I need more information. So like if we were to go through, if we were to get like 3k or like, I guess, I guess so we can always just, it's just, I don't know. No. 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 It's going to be k. Two things to keep in mind. One, though, web assign doesn't want the k. They take k to be 0. The other thing, on your web assign, uh, you know how when we've done this, a lot of times we've taken a derivative and gotten something else that we've had to integrate as compared to down here where we just got a 0? OK. A lot of times on the web assign, you get a 0. So don't forget that 0 is not always the case. Do you get what I'm saying? 